tonight. We're going to turn everything around backwards. And uh, I've got to go to Lynchburg as soon as I get done here. My daddy's got to have a walker, and I've got one, and he's still a boss. So I'm going to do my job, and then I'm going to slide out. And don't, don't think you can do nothing while I'm gone, because I'm going to listen to you all the way up the road. i got to turn and broadcast on my telephone. So I will be tuning in, so don't try to vote me out doing something crazy while I'm gone. It will not happen, okay? Take your Bibles and turn with me, if you would, to the book of Romans, chapter 13. Romans, I've been trying to preach this message since last Wednesday, and he finally gave me the green light. So I'm going to start it tonight, and we'll end it on Wednesday. We'll be talking about woe unto those who forget God. We talked about the declaration, he is almighty God. So amen. amen. That's the declaration. Then we've talked about for the last two, three services, his intention. He sealed us, secured us, sanctified us, steadfast, substance, secret, specially, see. We talked about scripted and shaped this morning. Now we're going to take the next step in this process, and we're going to talk about direction. Direction. The direction of leadership is to promote righteousness and restrain evil. So we've gone from the almighty God and we know he's almighty. Then we've looked at us as individuals, and we know that he scripted our lives. He knows us from the womb. There's a purpose and a plan. So knowing that he's God almighty, and knowing that we're men with a free will who have to submit to God, where does leadership come in? Human leadership. Where does government come in? Where does the family fit, fit, fit into this picture? Uh, where does state government fit into this picture? Uh, where, where's human leadership fit between God and man? You don't understand that? You're going to have utter chaos. You don't understand how you to react to leadership? You end up with anarchy. So in Romans chapter 13, verses 1 through 7, first of all, only a devil would believe that he, <clears throat> that he needed no direction in this world and leadership we live in. Only the devil. So that means anyone who thinks they don't need a mama or daddy, they don't need a boss on the job, they don't need a governor in the governor's mansion. I'm almost scared to say this one. A president in the White House. <laughs> You have to have these human leaders. You have to have leadership. And God in his word makes it clear how you're to react to all this leadership. And you ain't going to like it because it's not to our human nature to follow leadership. That's not our human nature. Proverbs chapter 14. We get to Romans in just a minute. I got 20 minutes of introduction and four hours of message. Yeah, I'll get that next week. Proverbs 14, 12. Look at the screen. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. There are two verses in the Bible that quote this back to back in Proverbs. Without putting God in the leadership role of your life, now listen to me. Without having God in the leadership role of your life, the result is death. Spiritual death and even physical death. Both. So you have to have God in your leadership, but then you've got to also understand God is ordained leadership in this world. You say, well, I don't understand that, preacher. I know my, God gave me a mom and daddy, but God gave me a bad mom and daddy. Hey, they're still your mom and daddy. God has given us a bad leader in the White House or the State House or the Courthouse. Makes no difference. They're still the leader. And they wouldn't be there if God didn't ordain it. Well, say, preacher, they're evil. I, I can't help that. But God can take evil and make it good when he wants to. Say amen. amen. They're not going to do but so much one way or the other with God, God reigning them in. You've got to trust Almighty God. The result of allowing God to lead in our lives and us following his will and his way will be an abundant life. And part of that will and way of God is obeying the leadership that's around you. John 10.10. 10. 
The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the devil. Amen? I am come that they may have life and they might have it more abundantly. It's a wise thing to do things God's way, not Satan's way. He said, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd, three words, giveth his life. If he died for you, he's certainly not going to let you fail. He's certainly not going to let you not fulfill his will for your life. I don't care who's in the White House, State House, Courthouse, in your house, or in the church house. It doesn't matter, because God's still almighty. Say amen. amen. But if you read your Bible and you study the Word of God, you know one thing's for sure. What men mean for evil, God will turn it right around and make it good. Those brothers of Joseph's, they wanted him dead. They put him in a pit. He went to Potiphar's house. Then he went to the prison. Then he went back to the Pharaoh's house. And he became the second greatest man on the face of the earth. And his brothers wanted him dead. And God just raised him up to be a great leader. You've got to trust God. Amen? Didn't look good when he was in a pit. Still really wasn't bad. It was better than the pit when he was in Potiphar's house. But then he got chased by a wicked woman and ended up in prison. That didn't look good. I think if my story is correct, it was 15 years of that in prison. 15 years, not 15 days. 15 years in prison. And then by a miracle of God and a dream and him uh, uh, interpreting the dream, he became the second man under Pharaoh. Say, God can take what people mean for evil and he can turn it good. Say amen. And we absolutely must have God's leadership in our lives to survive the onslaught of the devil. Joseph had to survive the onslaught of the devil's work. Did he not? And so he had to have faith in God. He had to be trust God. He could have took the easy way out with Potiphar's wife, but he didn't. He stayed holy, didn't he? And he stayed righteous, and it cost him. The devil made sure it cost him, but it cost the devil more in the end. Say amen. It cost the devil more. The devil and his demons are all around us in the world. Our fleshly old nature's against us. But listen to what Jesus promised us in John 16, 33. These things, the word of God, I have spoken unto you that you may have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The greatest example of someone being abused by leadership was Jesus. The religious leadership had him set up. The government had him executed. And they buried him. <laughs> but that came hold him down, did it? God raised him from the dead. So he's the greatest example we could have of, yes, you shall have tribulation in the world, but be of good cheer. 1 John chapter 2, verse 13. I write unto you, fathers, because you've known him that is from the what? God Almighty. We've talked about it. Write unto you, young men, because you've overcome the wicked one, the devil, and your own flesh. That's the biggest thing you have to fight. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are... Aren't you glad you can be strong in this wicked world? That ought to encourage you tonight, because I don't feel strong sometimes. Sometimes I feel weak. But thank God you can be strong. No matter what's attacking you from what corner, from the top down, around, or from underneath up, doesn't matter. God can make you strong through the world. I love that example. Let's remember to clay. That was good. How do you get clay out of dust? You add a little of the word of God to it. And then you mold it. You make it whatever you want to and whatever God needs you to be. Direction must come from the Lord. God must be the leadership in your life individually. If he's not, you're doomed to failure and defeat and destruction. Any leadership outside of God leads to destruction. Where are you going with all this, preacher? Well, let me make it simple before I make it complex. Very simple. Jesus stood before Pilate. He stood before Caiaphas. He stood before these rulers in the nation, and they condemned him. 
He was not guilty. He had done no wrong. He had done no evil. But the fact of the matter is this. In the end, God won. Today, I don't know where Ananias and Caiaphas, and I'm pretty sure Herod's in hell. But you know what? If they're in hell today, they lost. They should have listened to Jesus, but they didn't. And they went to doom and destruction. So those who do you wrong in leadership, and they're going to do you wrong, your boss is going to do you wrong, and other people around you in leadership in your life are going to do you wrong. Your mom and daddy might do you wrong, and your governor may do you wrong. Your president may do you wrong. You all a dead crowd tonight. I was going to let you out early. It doesn't matter. God's in control. Say amen. God's in control. Now, Matthew 7, 13, last verse we'll look at before we get into the message. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go there in their act. Because straight is the gate, and now is the way which leadeth unto life. There be few that find it. Listen to this, verse 7. Beware of false prophets. Now this is going to sound like an arrogant statement. I don't mean it to be arrogant in any way, but I mean for it to be factual. I look at the world we're in today. I listen to preachers on the internet. I listen to them on television. I listen to them on radio. And I am just flabbergasted at what some of these birds is preaching out there on this radio and on television and on the internet. I mean, it's, it's not in the Bible. It's not in the Word of God. They twist scriptures. They build their own doctrines. And they're leading people astray. Not lost people. Supposedly saved people in the church. One reason I preach the Bible and I use so many scriptures is it's less that I say if I read you more scripture. The more I give you Bible, the more the Holy Spirit can talk to you. That's why these preachers who get uh, in a pulpit and read two verses and never read any more scripture, I don't give much credibility to them. Why? Because we need the Word of God. We need that water to take our dust and make it into clay and make us moldable for the Lord. Now, which come up to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. It's amazing. It's amazing how Satan can make darkness really look like light and make it look good. And all, all of a sudden you find out it's not the real light. It's phony light. This is not real light. You say it's not preacher's light. It's man-made light. This is man-made light. The real light is outside that window when the sun's going down. Am I right? That's the real light. And so that's the source of most of the light in the universe. But we have phony light. If the power goes out, the lights ain't coming on. Are y'all even getting where I'm going? But if the power goes out at 3 or 4 in the morning, you're guaranteed there's going to be some light in about 3 hours, maybe 4. The sun's going to come up, right? We have got to get used to the S-O-N and looking at the Word of God and not depending on this phony light that's out there. You see, if you know what's real, you know what's phony. But if you don't know what's real, how do you know what's phony? You need to know the Word of God. Now, it says there inwardly is raving wolves. Did you get this acrostic on the screen? Good. Put that up there for me, if you would. Wolves. I come up with this acrostic. Don't go home and look for it in the book because it's mine. I developed this myself. Wake, wicked ones, loving violence, and eradicating saints. That's pretty good, isn't it? Evil, wicked ones, loving violence, and eradicating saints. Now, therefore, we need and must have the 
the leadership of God. If not, we're following wolves that will tear you apart. The stupidest commercial I've seen on TV here lately is this wolf standing at the door growling, pitching to attack somebody. And they throw a little chew toy out there and he starts playing with a chew toy. Let me warn you, that is not real. That is Hollywood. Don't you th have a wolf come to your door and think you throw him a chew toy outside. He's going to become a little lamb. Ain't going to happen. They're going to jump to the door and have you for supper. Read Little Red Riding Hood. That'll tell the truth. You can't read Little Red Riding Hood. Now, what I'm trying to say is this. These wolves in sheep's clothing, they call themselves leaders. But you've got to know the truth. Amen? We've got to follow the Almighty. Now, so let's break this down, get a little more complicated, take two or three services, get through it all, but we'll start, and I'll end in just a minute. Ordained of God. Look at Romans 13 now. Romans 13, 1. Let every soul be subject unto the what? You just said there's waving wolves, preacher. God knows who they are. They're still leaders. I may not like some of the leaders that are in our government, but I promise you, if I went in their presence, I wouldn't act like a monkey. I'd act like a Christian. I may not respect their personal stands, but I respect the office that they hold, that they were elected to. We're losing that in our country. When a representative says, get in their face and show them rudeness, if they don't think like you think, that's a problem. That's a wicked problem. Because this verse says, let every soul, saved or unsaved, let every soul be subject to high powers, for there's no power but of God. They're not going to be there if God don't let them be there. I don't believe you. Well, go read the story about Herod in the book of Acts. He showed himself and got eaten up by worms and died right there on the spot. I would mess with God, would you? Nebuchadnezzar messed with God's people, and he turned him into a lunatic eating grass out in the field and growing feathers. Read the story. He messed with God, okay? God can handle these wicked leaders is what I'm trying to tell you. You just respect their position, and you respect them even though they may not deserve it. You respect them because God asked you to. I don't understand. I didn't ask you to understand. I ask you to know what the Bible says. Say amen. We've got to be careful how we treat our leaders. God puts leaders in our lives for our protection. It's true all leaders are not godly and all leaders are not good. Yet it's true they will answer directly to God for how they've led. Therefore, we are subject to our earthly authorities as a good testimony of our Lord and Savior. Our testimony is on the line. If you go out there acting like some of these crazy people in Hollywood are perjuring and stealing and getting up in people's faces, that's not, that doesn't prove, that proves you're worldly and lost. That proves you're saved. A Christian knows how to respect a leader even if that leader's not godly. Dr. Farwell, he was the great example I know in my lifetime of standing up for what's right but respecting who was in the position. You never saw him talk ugly to somebody in leadership. He might tell them the truth, but he was never ugly with them. Amen or oh me. He, he would have, I, he'd have people, I, 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 when I was in school, I had to take a deep breath two or three times. Because when I was up there, he had, uh, uh, who's the guy that killed the woman of Chappaquiddy? Kennedy. He had Kennedy up there speaking. I didn't want to go. I told Brother Chapman, I ain't going. Brother Chapman says, you are going. I said, Brother Chapman, I don't want to go hear that liberal. He said, that's not the point, son. He said, this is Liberty University. We're Christians. We're going to respect him. And we're going to go hear what he's got to say, and then we're going to disagree with him. But we're not going to be disagreeable while we do it. And we're not going to be disrespectful while we do it. So you know what Walter done? Walter went to chapel. Just like I supposed to. 
And through the years, he's made a practice in this, even after his death. They bring these other leaders in because they want them to see how we act. Amen? Because the lost world don't act respectful. And they're proving that with all this violence that's going on, wanting to defund the police and all this kind of stuff. It's disrespectful. We're not to be, we are to disagree in a respectful manner, but we're not to be disrespectful. We're, we're losing our position. We're losing the high road by taking Hollywood's low road, through taking Washington's low road. We're losing our respect, and we're losing our ground and pillar of the truth. The word subject is the Greek word hoop at aso. It means to subordinate, submissively, to obey, to be under obedience, subject, to be in subjection, submit self unto. We're to follow the laws as long as they do not violate the Word of God. Now, I'm a tight rod. I'm honest. I'm so tight I squeak when I walk. I'm honest. And some of these taxes they throw around, I don't want to pay them. But I'm going to pay them. Because the Bible says pay them. Even though you don't agree with it, you don't like it, you don't have got a thing in the world to do with it. Render unto Caesars what's Caesars. And render unto God what's God's. We are to follow those laws as long as they don't violate the word of God. We are to do this willingly and not by force. Why? Because we need to respect our leadership. We need to respect those who are in authority because we don't want to cause an uproar that may make them look weak. Right? And a foreign power say they're weak and we could take them. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? A lot of this monkey business going on in Washington, D.C. makes us look like a bunch of crazy people. Other countries don't pull this junk. They got disagreements. They go behind the door and disagree and come out smiling. Why? For the sake of the country and the safety. Keep the people safe. But America, it's just like a, a fountain of disinformation and filth all the time about each other. I have, years ago when I first started voting, I don't ever remember all this backbiting and, and, and causing trouble for each other, trying to destroy each other around the fringes instead of the ballot box. Am I telling the truth? We're seeing it today like crazy because we don't dis we disrespect our leaders and we disrespect the law. We think, well, if a law don't suit me, I'll just break it. That's sin. It's sin. It's wrong, and we're destroying our foundations. Now, the word ordained in the Greek is defined as determined in the same sense that they are a part of God's purpose plan. So I don't understand that. I can't help if we don't if we don't understand. Did you hear that? You don't understand, and I don't either. But God had Nebuchadnezzar where he was for a reason. Am I right? God had Herod there for a reason. Am I right? He, these evil men are all a part of God's plan, and their choices, God's going to turn it around on them and turn it against them, and that's God's business. Have you ever? Wonder why your mama was doing what she was doing and it got on your nerves because she wouldn't explain to you why she was doing what she was doing? Y'all not telling the truth. You're not telling the truth because you have. My mama used to say, do it because I said so. But why? Because I said so. You see, sometimes when you're young, you can't understand everything's going on or if you try to explain it to a young person, they'll try to help you and mess you up. Y'all act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. So they don't explain those things to you until you get older and more mature and you can handle it. Say amen. But they do it for your benefit. They do it for your benefit. They're trying to be, but they, they can take you where you are to where you need to be. Does that make sense? They're trying to get you to mature and grow. God doesn't owe us any explanation for the plan he's got set out. Now me, this is Yanceology, what did I just say? This is Yanceology. If it was me, 
I think I'd have wrote the Bible a whole lot different. Don't look at me so innocent. If you could have wrote the Bible different, you would have too. I'd have left the glutton part out. <laughs> I'd have left that completely out. But he put it in there. No part. But you see, I'm not God. And I'm not perfect. But God is. I'd have done the salvation plan a whole lot different. But probably a whole lot more people went to hell because I wouldn't have been as compassionate as God was. Say amen. You know what I'm talking about here. So God doesn't owe us an explanation why things are laid out like they are. You've got to trust him. Easy preaching. Hard living because the pressure's on. The pressure's on me and you. Can you imagine the pressure Jesus was undergoing to the cross of Calvary knowing he was not guilty? He was innocent of everything he was charged of. And they, when they put his arms down and they put nails in his hand and his feet, do you think? He said, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. I, I, I don't like to see blood. I don't like to see death. That wouldn't have been the way I made the plan, but I'm not God. He is, and it's his plan, and it's a perfect plan, and it's a plan that works if man submits to it. Okay? So that's why we've got to obey even though we don't understand. Because all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. The Antichrist will not be godly. He'll not be righteous, a righteous leader, but is part of God's prophetic plan to bring Christ back to the earth and set up his millennial kingdom. When I study the book of Revelation, I do ask myself, God, why? Why? Why do people have to have their heads chopped off? Why is a third of the world going to be burned up? Why is the heavens going to roll away like a scroll? Why, why are you doing all that? I don't understand it. But I know it's the truth and it's got to happen. He, he, he's got to purify the earth. He's got to eradicate sin before Christ can come back and, and, and bring in the millennium. But he knows what he's doing. I watch somebody work on a car and I get bum puzzled. I think they're breaking my car instead of fixing it. Y'all ever thought that? They, they're going to break it. But they know what they're doing. And they get it fixed, and I get in, crack it up, and drive it. And I say, well, it didn't look like fixing to me, but they got it fixed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. we got to trust God like you trust your mechanic. I believe some people trust their mechanics more than they trust God, and that's sad. That's sad. These things must be in order to bring about what God has said will be. It's got to be. I'm going to do this one real quick, and I'm going to go. We see the A, ordained of God. Now the ordinance of God. Look at verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, the authority, resisteth, listen to this now, this is what the Bible says, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive themselves, what does that say? Damnation. You better not resist. You better not be a rebel. You better pay attention. You better obey God. Just listen to God's directives and do not try to be a rebel rouser. I don't understand all these Christians in church who think they've got to have a WrestleMania moment in church to get their way. God doesn't approve that. Amen or amen. God said be in unity, work together. Focus on the Bible, focus on the ministry, focus on soul and focus on encouraging the brothers. He doesn't say anything in there about let's have a disagreement and a fight in the church. Not there. We do that by being a rebel rouser. I guarantee, I promise you, as God sits on the throne, if something bothers you bad enough and you take it to God in honesty and true honesty and you pray about it, God will take care of it. He'll change the situation or he'll change you, one or the other. Amen? God doesn't lie. God works everything out. And that's the same way in government. It's the same way on, on your job. Just trust God. 
Don't go on the job. I've known some Christians go on the job and start putting the Bible out preaching to people while they're on the job. That's the wrong thing to do. Because if you're preaching the Bible to people who don't believe the Bible, you're causing more trouble than you're doing good. Amen or oh me? A whole lot easier to pray and obey and be a good testimony and get the opportunity to share the Word of God so they will listen. But if you're a rebel rouser, they're never going to listen to you. No, they're going to pay attention to you because you're stirring up stuff. Let alone trust God and obey Him. If we go out on our own and disobey God's directives as far as leadership is concerned, we end up being like Peter, causing more confusion than cooperation with God's plan. Poor Peter, every time he done something, he was stupid. And it was wrong. And he kept messing up because he was a rebel rouser. He wanted to cut Malchus's ear off, and God, Jesus said, Son, that ain't the right thing. Don't put it right back on. You ever had somebody undo something you've done? <laughs> they do a plastic canvas, and Wendy say, Pull it out. <laughs> and they don't like it. But see, Wendy did, went through that 25 years ago with a lady named Miss Crow. I couldn't stand that woman. Because she was making me do plastic canvas and I'd do it. She'd say, pull it out, preacher. I don't want to pull it out. I work too Pull it out. Yes, ma'am. Hello? Peter didn't like it because Jesus undid what he did. But if he'd done what he ought to in the first place, he wouldn't have had to undo it. Some of you keep running around like a dog chasing his tail because you ain't learned that lesson yet. <laughs> Just do what he tells you. Just obey him, trust him, pray, be a testimony. It was God's will for Christ to be arrested, falsely accused, convicted, and crucified. Explain that to me, preacher. I can't. I just say it's part of God's plan. And it worked. What do you mean it worked? They arrested him. They convicted him. They crucified him. They buried him. Yeah, but he rose from the dead. How many of y'all can say you've ever seen that happen? God must have done something really good for Jesus. Say Amen. Just follow his plan. Man meant for cruel hypocrisy, but God turned it into the salvation of men. We may not understand, but that's the reason Jesus said, have faith. Amen. Have faith. One word and we'll go. Ordinance. I mean ordinance in the Greek is the word de at aj a. Arrangement, institution, instrumentally. We do not need to mess up what God is trying to do through his marvelous, ageless plan. Can I help you? His plan's been around longer than all of us. And it's worked so far, so why would we mess with it? Say amen. Now, we must recognize and accept God's plan and help him see it through to we all get victory. To we all win. Leviticus 22 9. They shall therefore keep mine ordinances, lest they bear sin for it, and die therefore, if they profane it, I, the Lord, do sanctify them. He said, They may do wrong, but I put them there. And I'll take care of them. Let me tell you something. If somebody took one of your children outside and took a belt and whooped them, <whistles> you'd be all men in two seconds flat. Don't lie to you, preacher. You know I'm telling the truth. So why would you and I need to correct the people God's put in position? He can take care of them. And he does. Amen? He exposes them. He takes care of them. He works it out. Look at Nebuchadnezzar. Look at Herod. Look at all these. Look at Saul. Saul was chosen to be the leader of Israel. He turned sour. Tried to kill David. In the end, he ended up falling on his own sword. Literally went crazy. Literally went crazy. One last verse. Submit yourselves, 1 Peter 2.13, to every ordinance of man. For the Lord's sake, for your testimony, 
don't embarrass God by being a rebel rouser. Let God do the work. You just stand still and stand for him and let him be God. Amen? That's what he's saying. Whether it be to the king as supreme or to, to governors, as until they are sent to him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so it is the will of God that with well-doing ye shall put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Because we'll always be proven right if we stand by God. You go out on your own, you're on your own. And you don't fall on your own. Just stand beside God. Love God. Stand up for God. Proclaim His truth. Don't be rude, crude, and obnoxious. Don't disrespect those in leadership. And in the end, God will win. And if God wins, guess who wins with him? We do. Every head's bowed. Every eye's closed. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Life is not easy for us. Life is hard. It's tough. But, Lord, if we'll just do what you say to, if we'll just trust you with all our heart, soul, and mind, he will take care of us. Lord, help us to surrender to that. Now, Lord, let me take this a step back as we give this invitation. There's probably nobody in this room, Lord, that has a beef with someone in leadership of government. But, Lord, they may have a beef with their mama or their daddy. They may have a beef with their employer on the job. Or maybe they're upset with their pastor or their deacon. Lord, maybe they're upset with a Sunday school teacher. Lord, you didn't call us to be rebel rousers. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Lord, you've made that clear. And the best way we can make peace is to be obedient, even when we don't understand. Lord, help us remember Joseph. How though he was in the pit, he went to Potiphar's house. There he did well for a while, then he got lied on, and he went to prison. He stayed there for 15 years in unconscionable circumstances. But then one day God worked a miracle. He came out of the prison back to Pharaoh's palace. And there he became the second in command of all of Egypt and saved his whole family from death and drought and certain destruction. Lord, we've got to believe you know what you're doing and believe it enough to keep our hands off and trust you. Lord, there's many things in our lives we may not understand. There's many things in our lives that we can't comprehend. But oh, what a blessing it is, God, when we keep our eyes on you and our heart with you and stay faithful to you and we keep our testimony and then down the line you work a miracle and say, now, Lord, I see why you did what you did. Thank you, Lord, for helping me stay humble, meek, and faithful. Maybe tonight some of us just need to come to the altar and say, Lord, help us stay meek, humble, and peaceable, and let you do what you've got to do. And then when you give the victory, we can shout the victory and be right about it. God bless this invitation. Speak to every heart in Jesus' name. Stand to your feet as Brother Mike starts that verse of invitation. Come.